Let's look at judgment today. As human beings, we are judgment machines. Wake up in the morning, start judging. Start judging yourself, start judging your partner, the people in your house, what you have to do that day, what you don't have to do, whatever it is, we are automatically judging. Judgment can often interfere with learning about ourselves, about our world, about other people. Now, if you're hearing this and you're saying, no, I don't do that, that's wrong or that's bad, I'm not that person, I want you to rewind and go watch my video on perfectionism because that's what's happening right now. It's okay that you judge. We judge all the time, we judge all kinds of things. And again, judgment is not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes judgment is a piece of discernment. That's absolutely necessary. It's really the attitude of heart. It's what you're doing with that information that tells you whether or not it's a judgment. I'm gonna ask you today to pay attention to your own judgments about yourself. We're gonna start there. I'd like you to think about the list that you keep on yourself. You know, the list. The list of things that you say to yourself about yourself that you hold against yourself. And if you've never written those down, let me encourage you to do that. It's quite revelatory. Write down the judgments or the things you hold against yourself. I'm this, I'm not that, I'm too fill in the blank, tall, fat, young, short, stupid, smart, whatever it is. The list that you hold against yourself that shows up in the form of judgments. And when you look at that list, what are some things that you find? Where did that list come from? Did you create that list? Did you adopt that list? Was it something that someone else spoke to you that you then decided, okay, I'm gonna own this one or it's gonna become part of my own internal narrative? Notice your list and as you look through that list, what is it that you see? What really stands out to you? Can you reverse engineer? and discern where did this one come from? Where did that one come from? What evidence am I using against myself or about myself to maintain this judgment? Human beings are so predictable in one way. We love to be right. We love to be in control. We like that certainty, because certainty equals safety, which equals survival. And We'd rather be right about something we don't necessarily even like about ourselves because the certainty of being right about it is more gratifying, it feels more safe than the uncertainty. So if I'm telling myself, well, you're just not very sensitive, one thing I'm doing is I'm increasingly being insensitive so I can continue to be right about not being sensitive. I'm also giving myself permission, of course, to not be sensitive and then tell myself and probably other people too, well, I'm just not very sensitive. I'm just this kind of person or I'm that kind of person, which is another great place to notice some of the judgments that you hold about yourself. Now, what do you do with those judgments? What do you use them for? Where do you allow those judgments to interfere with your own personal transformation, moving into the person that you believe you're here to be for other people? Notice what you do with your judgments. Notice where your judgments come from. And as you examine your judgments, you're gonna ask yourself, is this 100% true? Is there anything else that could be just as true or truer? What if the opposite is true? What if there's a wide spectrum between this judgment and the polar opposite and everything in between? And as a human being, I actually live in the spectrum. Sometimes there's some truth over here, sometimes there's truth over here, and then everywhere in between. Do you allow yourself the flexibility to be another way? a way that you wouldn't normally describe yourself? Do you have the openness to consider when something else is happening or when it's not happening? I was talking to someone on the phone the other day who is really excited about doing one of our trainings. And the only hesitation this person had was, ah, 
I'm not sure if I want to be vulnerable in front of a group of people. Perfectly logical. And as we were discussing pros and cons, ups and downs, I said, when was the last time you were vulnerable in front of a group of people? And this person explained this whole entire situation where they were the only one in their company standing up for blowing the whistle on a supervisor who was sexually harassing people in the company. And it was a ministry, so it was very taboo, a lot of drama around it, but they continued to stand. They continued to push out and speak their truth until things got noticed and change happened. And it was about a four to five month process, very uncomfortable. So as they described this whole thing to me, I said, wow, that's ma amazing, right? good for you. That sounds like a vulnerable process. So if you could be vulnerable for four to five months, don't you think you could be vulnerable for four days? And I think it opened up something new for them because most of us have actually done the thing that we say we can't do or we don't want to do or that we're afraid to do. We've just done it in another context. Can we look at our lives, can we hold our judgments loosely enough to look out at the whole spectrum of our lives and say, well, when was this not true or when was the opposite true? And give ourselves permission to see the other evidence, the other data that's actually there. We've all done all kinds of things. We just happen to land on our preferences to describe ourselves. And we also do this with other people. So we have our judgments about ourselves. We also have our judgments about other people. Now they might be members of our family. They might be members of our community or our work or our church or whatever group that we find ourselves in. What do you do with those judgments? It's the same process. In the transformational world, we like to say, you spot it, you got it. So if I notice something about someone else that I'm judging or that I say I don't like, perhaps the reason that I identified it so quickly is because I am really familiar with it over here on this side. I don't always like to examine things that way, but there's some value in it. It actually opens up a possibility for me, instead of judging the other person, to learn something or see something about myself and to have some empathy for them at the same time. There's a lot of possibilities besides judging another person that you can engage. I don't know about you, but shelter in place seemingly has put a magnifying glass on my judgments. <laughs> my brain is continually looping on a lot of the same data because I've been home. I've been home way more than I maybe ever have in my whole entire life. And if you're like me and you've got less opportunity to be busy, to be outside, to be with other people, and you're more looking at yourself, talking to yourself, you're gonna find that maybe your judgments have increased in this time. And if that's true for you, it's okay. Keep writing your list, keep looking at your list. There is relief available here. We don't have to stay stuck and swirling through the narrative over and over and over again. We can put it on pause, we can examine it, we can find other evidence, and ultimately find some freedom from the oppressive web that judgments create in our thinking. Thanks so much for watching today. If this video was valuable for you, smash that like button, give me a comment, let me know that you're out there. I'd love to hear from you.